Gros Morne, a land of immense power, strange beauty, and brooding skies. These are the types of landscapes that I, I see in my mind's eye. Four artists have come to make a film, and the director has a vision. I've kind of structured the shoot in a way that it kind of f***s us up. Possessed by the dark spirit of this landscape. We're, we're going to lose the light any minute here. we got to do this quickly. They'll do anything it takes to see it through. It's freezing cold, so it's hard to be inspired. I understand it's for the film, but... Uh... Painters of the Group of Seven set out to capture the Canadian landscape in art. Now, groups of intrepid musicians and filmmakers are following their footsteps through Canada's most amazing parks. They are Jamie Fleming, Sam Shalabi. Melissa Oftemar. And Sterling Gunnarsson. The power of nature, the magic of art. This is the National Parks Project. Gros Morne, 1,800 square kilometers of maritime coast, wind-swept trees, old mountains, and geological wonders. Here, the earth is turned inside out, exposed to the gray Newfoundland skies where weather changes by the minute. Gros Morne, great somber, a place of strange and shocking beauty. It's 3.30 in the morning on the table lands, and a heavy mist is falling. Director Sterla Gunnarsson has a plan for his film, to shoot three musicians individually at dawn. What time is the official sunrise? 4.40. Sort of approach the whole thing as like, like waking from a dream, trying to, to experience dawn on this landscape without imposing any idea on it, but rather just to simply let it express itself. Melissa, can you go up, but closer to us? His first recruit, Melissa Oftemar, has lived the rock star lifestyle, playing in huge American bands, whole and smashing pumpkins. She's not used to seeing sunrise, but her dark music is inspired by eerie places like this. It's worth getting out of bed for this. Early morning showers and beautiful mist. And outer space landscape, always good to see. Melissa is collecting sounds to layer over her bass guitar, trying to capture the alien energy of the tablelands, where colliding continents forced the Earth's mantle up to the surface, the only place on the planet where this vivid orange rock is so exposed. These are the types of landscapes that I, I see in my mind's eye when I'm trying to create musical landscapes. So they seem very familiar. While Melissa roams the table lands, the other musicians have moved into Green Point and taken cover from the rain in a nearby cabin to get in tune. Sam Shalabi, and Jamie Fleming come from very different musical styles. Tuning's overrated. <laughs> Sam has brought his oud, a kind of Arabic lute. He's known for exploring Middle Eastern music. It's an odd combination of musicians, which I probably, I guess, is why we were picked to do it, to sort of do what we do in a kind of more improvisatory way. Jamie comes from the blues tradition, continents removed from the Oud's Arabic sound. You just have to listen, and if you can listen and fit yourself in somewhere, something's gonna come of it, you know what I mean? Melissa's in 
encounter with Dawn is over, but Sterla is determined to shoot two more sunrises with Jamie and Sam. His goal is then to have all three musicians play together at the remote coastal cliffs of Green Gardens. But with their different musical styles, will the musicians be able to connect? What my, I feel most excited and comfortable about doing anyway is building yeah. our little files of all the yeah. sounds so far. Yeah. While these guys, from what I can tell in my first impressions of Sam and Jamie, they're very, very good people. The only thing that's um, interesting in this case is just how radically different our musical backgrounds are. So we shall see. To this mix, Gross Morn adds water. It could be a long, wet road to the final shot at the towering cliffs of Green Gardens. different worlds in Gross Morn, but they're all linked together through the water that surrounds the park, saturating the skies and the earth. Are you on a waterbed too? Um, a moat. But it's not like under your tent? No, no, it's actually just Ours is a full on waterbed. Okay, water mm -hmm. Jamie is going to join filmmaker Sterla Gunnarsson on the rocky beach of Green Point, where Sterla is devising a plan. What I want to do tomorrow morning, I hope you can join me. The sun will be coming up here across the water if there's sunshine. What do you think? Yeah, sure. Do your hands get cold? What? When you're playing? Yeah, yeah. It's too cold, I can't play. Yeah. I don't usually get up in the morning and play music instantly. I usually play music at night at clubs or what have you. Jamie's game now, but the world will look different at 3 in the morning. gamble to bet on the sun in gross morn, where damp, cold air is the norm, and temperatures can drop close to zero overnight. Sterla is determined to make the weather cooperate. At Salmon Point, on the shores of Bombay, Jamie greets the morning with a gentle tune. For me, it was the idea of putting a very expressive human being on the landscape who able to express that sense of beginnings and uh, hope and optimism. structured the shoot in a way that it kind of f***s us up. You know, we wake up every day at like 3 in the morning and to get somewhere before the sun comes up and, and, and then we shoot for a couple of hours and then we go back to our tents and sleep. I think in general I've been sort of quasi-discombobulated in, in a way. It feels like I'm waking from a dream, dreaming and becoming beaver in a sense. Maybe. <laughs> Camping is nice for a while. It's nothing uh, I'd make a career out of. In between dawn and dusk, the group will be visiting one of the park's most spectacular sites, the ancient inland fjord of Western Brook Pond, with cliffs higher than the CN Tower. So I'm spending a lot of my life on a boat. Probably one of the most beautiful spots on Earth. Grows more and feels right. Tremendous uh, affinity in Newfoundland. Sterla was born in Iceland, land of the Vikings, 
who came to this coast a thousand years ago. This seems like magic to me. Sam still has to take his turn at dawn, and Sterla and his cameraman, Johnny, are choosing their next location carefully. Heads is east, tails is west. Tails it is. <laughs> With Sterla occupied, the musicians finally have a chance to work on their score. Melissa insists on having her ideas set the direction. Our first uh, get together, Jamie could not play along with me on certain notes, so we broke it down to basically D and G, and that's it. This may be the only opportunity the musicians will have to jam together for their final performance at Green Gardens. It would be nice to have a day of just the musicians doing what they do. Sterla has a spot for the last dawn with Sam, a mossy bog nearly 30 kilometers from their base camp. It's just like rolling barrens with moss sort of humps that you can sit on and wildflowers. I certainly know for myself and Jamie that waking up at 3.30 a.m. and playing in a bog, wet and cold, is not something I would have thought of doing. Well, so I guess we'll see. If it's a nice morning, I'd love to go for it because we just don't, I just don't know. It's not, not, not high on my list of oud oud ambient environments, actually. <laughs> Sterla is betting that the rain will stop by morning, but Sam isn't sold. Now it's up to the weather to decide who will prevail. Morn on the raw west coast of Newfoundland, filmmaker Sterla Gunnarsson is chasing the perfect sunrise, and there's just one morning left before his final shoot at the exposed cliffs of Green Gardens. Last night, rain threatened to cancel his shoot with musician Sam Shalabi. But the dawn skies are clear. Wet and cold is not something that I associate with plain wound, and it was on this trip. <laughs> Sam's worried the cold morning dew of the marsh near Western Brook Pond won't be good for his fragile instrument. But Sterla expects brilliance on cue. I think we were assuming that we were just supposed to kind of be fairly natural in our response and how where we did stuff or whatever, which in fact that's not really what it was, so I mean, we are more like actors, I guess. How you doing? Hands are frozen. I think that's, are you? What's that? Is that it then, you think? I think so. It'd be nice to still get him silhouetted against that when it comes up. But that's a couple of minutes away. The cold, wet wind has numbed Sam's hands. He can hardly play, but Sterla doesn't care if Sam is uncomfortable. He wants the shot, no matter what. Just see if you can find a minute or two more, and then we'll... Just stay, or just stay here? Yeah, just stay for a minute. The sun is just about to come up behind you, if you want to just okay, warm your hands and... like two minutes right now, and then we'll just... Okay. <sighs> We're kind of doing something that is 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 kind of fabricated and, and sort of contrived, I guess, in a way, you know, so it's not natural. With the moon hanging in gross morn's wide purple skies, skeptical 
Sam reluctantly concedes to Sterla's mad vision. Actually was it's good to you. It worked. Sam's not sure it was worth the effort. It seemed like people had expectations that we were going to, you know, lick the face of God or so or something. So that was the kind of a the a good kind of absurd ridiculousness. <laughs> Afternoon, they're all on the move again, chasing Sterla's grand finale, a sunset jam at the towering volcanic cliffs of Green Gardens. I think Jamie's had enough of the great outdoors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he has. Yeah. I'm always ready to go home. Yeah, it's just a bit exhausting, the whole thing. He was brought here to do one thing, I was brought here to do another thing. The location Sterla has chosen for their final jam won't be easy to reach. The shoreline is filled with large, boat-crushing rocks. Oh, my God, it's actually quite shallow. Have you ever been here before? First time. Really? First time. Yeah. The captain is in unfamiliar waters, and there's only one half-inflated dinghy to get to shore. The crew will have to go two by two, carrying their heavy gear with them. Not everyone is ready to get wet. Sam and I don't sweat. No, we so. don't. Yeah, people are just doing things and they don't really know what they're doing. It was it was concerning. of Green Gardens for a sunset jam session that will wrap up their film about Gross Moor. The sun is low and they're behind schedule. It's been a grueling day, but Sterla Gunnarsson believes hard times make good movies. I always think that you have to earn your gold. Uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, no. For the final jam, the musicians will play as a group. They've each played alone at dawn, but have had very little time to make their disparate musical styles mesh. I have no idea what the end result will be like, but that's fine. I don't think anybody here does. So. We're gonna lose the light any minute here. We gotta do this quickly. So let me know when you want me to roll. Okay, let it roll. Everybody out. Landscape feels as though it hasn't been touched by man. It feels the same as it did hundreds of thousands of years ago. The sun is sinking, but Sterla is still pushing for a perfect take. He's channeling the Viking spirit and won't leave without claiming his prize. We have a few minutes before we're being picked up. Either of the two left. Being asked to do stuff and put into situations where you're not necessarily comfortable, I think is, is ridiculous. It's just completely stupid. It's just like, why am I here? Which one's easier for you to do? Yeah. Well, actually, the one we just did for me. Okay, let's, let's do, do that, that one. The music felt very broody. I think what they were doing was affected by their surroundings. I've never played bass in these landscapes where I pull so much inspiration from. So the journey makes it worth it because um, because it feeds the music and it feeds my soul.
So wow, you were able to get Sunset and yeah. us? Yeah. Some magical hell? Uh. With the golden sun setting on green gardens, the film is complete. And the musicians are finally freed from Sterla's dream. Some people work together, and some people's personalities, they don't work together. So, I mean, it was beautiful, but I mean, it's not going to change me at this point, you know what I mean? I'm not going to go home and start making, I don't know, like hippie music or something. <laughs> it's just like, I'm going to go back to my life tomorrow. It was a life-changing experience. It reaffirmed my faith in Santa Claus. And I think we came up with some good music. I don't I have no idea what the, uh, the film stuff will be like. I think it will be like waking from a dream. Although I may just be stuck here. I'll just merge with the stones. <laughs>